Welcome to another episode of Marketing Revelations. I'm your host, Dan Flesh. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Chelsea. How are you doing, Chelsea? I'm great. How are you? I am doing lovely. Good. Today, we're going to be talking about competitive advantage. So excited. How do we always start these things off, Chelsea? <laughs> I make you to find competitive <laughs> advantage. Go for it. So your competitive advantage is all about how you stack up against your competition, what sets you apart, what makes customers want to choose you over your competitors, what are you doing right, essentially. I think this is one of those like big jargon words in the marketing. Definitely a buzzword. Other buzzwords that you might also hear, we've got uh, value prop. There's another <laughs> one that people also throw, kind of the same thing. It's fair. Um, and then also that unique selling proposition. Mm -hmm. All of those are kind of in the same vein. So if you hear any of those three terms, it all really means the same, the same thing. Um, but why do you find it so important? I know we talk about it so much in marketing of like, oh, what makes you unique and all that, but what's the impact that it actually has on a business when you have it? Yeah, so I think it it is encompassed in what I just said with what makes customers choose you over your competitors. Mm -hmm. So I think some examples of competitive advantage can be, um, you know, maybe your price point is set lower, than a competitor's or maybe you have more competitive promotions or maybe your product quality is better. Um, maybe if you're like a higher end brand that can play into your competitive advantage. Um, so there are all kinds of different things that go into it, yeah. but it's important to have one because again, that's what sort of sets you apart. For sure. And I think the scary thing is that was that commitment. Like once you have it, it can evolve with you. Mm -hmm. It's not like you've got this one thing. Yes. And then all of a sudden you got to stick with that for the duration of your business life. Yes, <laughs> Hopefully definitely forever. not. Yeah, it's like it can evolve. So maybe it's price point or, you know, maybe your competitors figure out how to match your price, but yep. you're, you're still better at service than they are or something like that. Yeah. The interesting thing about it is that it feels like it's always going to be this sort of competitive landscape, like this ecosystem, mm -hmm. things are going to be changing all around you that are out of your control. Yeah. Um, so you can adapt and adjust at any point. The last thing with that, that I think is important is it isn't like a set and forget mentality. Yeah. You don't just establish it and say, okay, we're done. We can move on to the next thing. Totally. You got to maintain it, especially if it's like a service thing or, mm -hmm. um, a quality piece you need to maintain your quality and constantly reevaluate i mean dig into the data make sure it's still working make sure like if you're going out of your way to make quality your competitive advantage and you check in and the quality's not there mm -hmm. you got nothing now that was an incredible segue set up for this segue <laughs> okay let's talk about how we find our competitive advantage we're using and assembling that data that you talked about yeah so what's that for talk a little bit about a competitive analysis and what so that means. competitive analysis is just um, taking some time to kind of look around and say, who are my biggest competitors? And then actually put some research together on sort of your offering compared to their offering. What is the market share? You can do things like SWOT analyses to kind of draw out your strengths and weaknesses. Um, and that's a really good starting place to mm -hmm. figure out what sets you apart. Yeah, it's uh, it's also it's not always setting apart too. You want to find the similarities too, mm -hmm. so you're not wasting um, time and words and oxygen on something that isn't actually setting you apart as well. Yeah. What about the um, like the marketing side of it? Are you should people be pulling in that marketing element to see how others are marketing? Or is yeah, that the marketing could even be someone's competitive advantage. Um, I think here my mind goes to. Wendy's, mm -hmm. when you think about that brand, their social media is like top of mind. It's an industry standard. They have the wittiest, most real time, most amazing social media presence. Um, and I would say that's one of their competitive advantages, right? So your marketing really plays a part into this. Your For messaging, sure. your website, you know, all of that right. can play into how you stack up. And seeing how other companies and competitors talk about themselves and their products as well can help determine what is your competitive advantage there as well absolutely and th another theme that i feel like we've hit on a bunch in the last uh couple episodes is like talk to your customers yeah <laughs> figure out why they like you mm -hmm. um you can do things as simple as conducting a survey with an email list yep um and i, I think that's just such an obvious place to start hey why do you come to us why do you like us look through your reviews and mm -hmm. see like things like that see what people are saying about you yep you can ask in like a customer service perspective um, whether you have someone on the phone or they're in your physical location you can kind of ask that question like how did you hear about us what made you choose us 
Um, you can also use social media mm-hmm. now within stories. Absolutely. There's all the ways to like take polls and sure. get information and data that way for free, basically. So mm-hmm. that's a really good way. And create good engagement too. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Gotta love engagement, another buzzword. <laughs> Um, I think the other la- the last piece, which is a little bit scarier, maybe harder to do, and maybe take with a little bit of grain of salt, but like talk to someone in person. Customer comes in, talk to them about their experience, what they liked, what they didn't like. You may not get a hundred percent honesty. You know, some people like to avoid conflict mm-hmm. um, and maybe sugarcoat their criticism a little bit. But I still think you can maybe pull out some some data there. Yeah. And uh, back to the uh, the email list thing, I think it's important to kind of don't just maybe send it to everybody. Um, but like really try and hone in on what your best customers are. Um, who are, do you have repeat customers? Um, I guess the other term, ideal customer, like what do they look like? Mm-hmm. What are they liking about your service? Cause they're the ones that they're repeat customers. Why definitely, why are they coming back? You want to really yeah. pull that information. They have the most interaction with your business. So they definitely have some insights that can be helpful mm-hmm. when you're doing this analysis. Yeah. So let's say you've got all this data mm-hmm. swirling around on your computer and your documents, whatever. What do we do with it? So I think from there, it's important to just make sure that you're looking for trends Mm -hmm. and you're looking for problems and you're saying, how can we fix what's gone wrong? And if there's something that a lot of people are saying, maybe something good you've been doing, maybe something bad, um, just really dig into those couple of things. If it's something good, I think you can kind of put your energy and your momentum into that. And Mm -hmm. like we're saying, make that your competitive advantage. Yeah. Um, and if there's a problem, just look at how you can fix those. Sure. It's about amplifying the good and fixing the bad. Absolutely. You don't want to ignore your bad or just take for granted your good. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to or even suppress. I know some people just kind of like, it's easy to say, oh, that's not a real thing. That's mm-hmm. not, um, take every negative piece of feedback with, with like an internal look of what can I do to make that better? Um, and I think you'll be surprised what you find. Yeah, absolutely. And I think all of this sounds a little bit obvious to some degree, like fix what's going wrong and put energy into what's going right. But Mm -hmm. I do think at the end of the day, if you're running a business, there's so much going on around you. um, It's important to just take the time Mm -hmm. to sit back for a second and think about those things. A lot of things can fall through the cracks. If you're so ingrained in running your operations day to day, you may miss something and it's good to, A, just for variety of your day. Yeah. <laughs> Break up your day and get your F to fresh set of, fresh in your mind, do something else for a second. Yeah. But think about what you can be doing to be better. Yep. Um, and never being satisfied with that kind of status quo. Yeah. Um, so we've got our competitive advantage. We've sifted through the data. We, it's now time to do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do the marketing piece. Yep. What does that mean? So I think that comes back to making sure you're getting reviews that sort of speak to your competitive advantage, that your website speaks to it, whatever it may be. Just make sure it's in your marketing. Make sure mm-hmm. when people are, you know, maybe your non-ideal customer or new customers, that they know exactly what it is that mm-hmm. you're doing right to yeah. set you apart from your competitors. Yeah, this is that shout it from the mountaintops piece. Yes. You want to make sure everyone knows what makes it makes Communicate, you different. Communicate. However you get can. Get out there. And I think it, you need this is maybe an, an obvious again obvious but maybe forgotten make sure it's real <laughs> you don't want to like put it nothing's more damaging than telling your competitive advantage and then mm-hmm. being wrong um that's just why you do all the research but you need to make sure that it continues to be that way yeah because if you know if you advertise oh lowest price in town someone walks in and it's not right, guy down the street's lower than, or like Little shout out to Elf, but best coffee in America. <laughs> you gotta back it up. It's a little bit of a hyperbole, but sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, like, it's it is though. It's real though. You want to make sure that what people are saying is actually matching reality. Yep. Because then that it just, can be patronizing, if not absolutely, and it could call into question so much more than just your competitive advantage. If mm-hmm. people are doubting that you're honest it makes about you that, trustworthy, right? And that's a huge, huge piece of it. Yeah. Um, but really, I think the key is like take some take some time it doesn't have to take doesn't have to be out or days or weeks or whatever a yeah. couple hours yeah really focus in sit down look at it find it and then just throw it at the center of all of your marketing needs to be kind of always come back to that center point yeah no matter what it is even if you're running a specialized campaign around a thing in the grand scheme it m- should tie in somehow to your competitive advantage Yeah. And I think for some, this may feel really easy. For some, this may seem really overwhelming. And I think if you're someone who's sitting here thinking like, where do I start with all of this? Mm -hmm. A good thing to do is just start by keeping a pulse on your competitors. Know Mm -hmm. who they are, follow them on social, 
just know what yeah. they're up to and what they're doing. And I think you'll naturally get there. <laughs> I think that's something we did uh, miss at the top there. We need to identify competitors. <laughs> <laughs> I think we said that. Yeah, sure, we sure, covered sure. it. Okay. I think it's also, <laughs> I, I struggle with it personally because I think like competitors, I think malice and like mm -hmm. hatred and stuff. It doesn't actually need to be that vibe. Totally. It just can be just figuring it out and like just casually, passively looking through the content of your the guy down the street or yeah. whoever your competitor may be. Keep your enemies closer. Sure, <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. Just kidding. Uh, with that, we'll wrap up the topic and we'll move to what's the point. So this month, we're going to talk about Starbucks. Love it. They're making a pretty big change. They are moving to reduce their waste by 50% okay. by 2030. Mm -hmm. So they are getting rid of those single-use plastic and all the single-use cups and they're gonna move towards a reusable cup program. They're just testing it right now in six markets, so it won't affect everyone mm -hmm. quite yet. But Dan, what's the point? Well, I think we set it off the top there. I think it's really, it's a bold move to take because when you think Starbucks, you think those little white cups with the green little logo on there, even yep. as the logo's zoomed in every like five years, I feel like it gets a little bigger <laughs> and whatever. Um, but it's bold it's it, iconic yeah i mean influencers it, i was thinking through like other kind of things that have that same impact and it's like i, I thought back to like the ipod back in the day it was just the white with the black silhouettes and mm -hmm. the color like it's bold. it's you're changing the primary thing like you walk down the street you see someone with a white cup starbucks there yep. it is mm, i want some starbucks yeah and to get rid of that in that same manner. I, we, it's unclear exactly what these new cups are gonna be. Yeah, I'm so, not entirely sure they'll get rid of it. Right, it's, it's unclear, right. but if I were them, mm -hmm. the reusable cups would look exactly like the paper cups. <laughs> well, right, exactly. And it, it's interesting though, as they talk about, like as you read through the stuff on it, like that, how much waste it actually probably was that mm -hmm. they were creating. Yeah. Um, and I know they might do some sort of biodegradable cup in the future. But with that, you run into the dye problems. Sorry, we're getting really sciencey, but like dyeing your cups is going to cause biodegradable issues. So maybe then you lose your white cup. Yeah. But I do see the feel like this is just part of a bigger push with a lot of corporations to kind of have this eco friendly approach mm -hmm. to the way they're doing business to appeal to sort that. Sort of that corporate responsibility piece. Exactly. Because that's becoming such a huge PR. part of consumerism. Yeah. People wanting to align with businesses that align with what they're beliefs are yes exactly and you know this seems like a i'm not gonna say easy i was gonna say it, it's a challenge like i can't the idea it's still kind of hard to wrap my head around because <laughs> yeah. like we don't know what it's gonna be yeah there's so many facets to like what's this mean for mobile ordering my mm -hmm. bread and butter what's it mean like so if i mobile order am i bringing in like 20 cups at the end of the month of like here's all my reusable cups right. go ahead and wash them and reuse them i or, did read that you can bring back your used unclean cups and mm -hmm. they will wash them for you but my question is is there a line like can i bring in yeah a moldy disgusting cup like into a sanitary that's a environment right that doesn't feel maybe they'll have a bin like a garbage bin type thing you just dump maybe. your cups in there and then however they they have their industrial cleaners i would assume yeah to do it but I don't mind. Sanitizing is going to be a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Drinking out of a cup that someone else has drank at. Like, yeah. there's a there's lot a to consider here. There yeah. To get over. I'm interested to see what happens in these what, six markets. I didn't see what they were, but I mean, what they say, 35 years, this has been uh, the way that they serve coffee. Mm -hmm. And to change that, like. I will say to speak to the point about them being iconic. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like every celebrity and influencer holds their Starbucks cup. I think there's a there's a possibility that these reusable cups become the new thing. Sure. Like if they start releasing them in cool colors or with cool designs. Mm -hmm. like Because they do that every Christmas. They have, the, you mm -hmm. gotta get your Christmas cup. I don't think people are super crazy about those. Yeah. I think people are crazy about the Christmas drinks. <laughs> but I think there's a, there's an opportunity for everyone to be like, oh, the new Starbucks cup. Did you see it? It's so mm -hmm. cute. I need one. Make a collector's or... item. But then are we really doing the reusable thing if we're just... Totally. <laughs> it's, I feel These like are that's... all fair questions. <laughs> and how many people do we think are going to throw away Well, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you... if I don't feel like washing it, because I've never had to wash my Starbucks cup before, not mm -hmm. speaking on my personal behalf, like I will you're... wash my cup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if someone doesn't, are they just going to toss it? It's a very valid question. It's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Yeah. If they expand it beyond those six markets, if it starts to do well. Mm -hmm. um, what, Will they abandon? I, if they abandon, we may never know. Yeah. <laughs> we just, as long as I can get my coffee in the morning, that's really all I care about. 
I do feel like from a PR standpoint, they've put this out there. I feel like they can't go back on it now. We uh, People, people are talking from, about it. They'll forget within two months. What then, if their waste <laughs> is not reduced by 50% by 2030? That's going to be a bad look. Well, Chelsea, tell me what their waste is right now. Exactly. It's double what it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's making them accountable for it. We don't have the data to do any of that. So That's true. It's a nice effort. We'll see what happens in the future. Fair. So with that, that ends the episode. Thank you guys for watching or listening, most people listening. Um, if you like what you hear, you can subscribe, iTunes, Spotify, um, pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts. We do have a video version online as well. Um, tips and tricks. We have our blog. Always check that out. And don't forget to email us at podcast at revlocal.com. Did I miss anything in the plug section? Per usual, you do not. Nice. All right. <laughs> we will see you guys Bye. next month.